welcome back. I'm Krista from Plant Lux. I am here for you every Monday and Thursday. And today I thought we would do some repotting of this giant pothos here that is pinned up on a stake. Um, it's overgrown its small pots. So we're gonna take this pot right here and we're going to upsize it to this. All right, so that's what we're gonna do today. Just a simple uh, repotting or up potting and yeah so let's get started so the first thing i would do is um kind of just check and see around the base to see you know if there's any roots coming out and it doesn't really look too too bad yeah looks okay and then i would put soil in the bottom of this so i would kind of just gauge like how much to put in bait based on, you know, the size of this pot versus, you know, what's going on in here. So it looks like I'm going to want to put in, there's like this much difference from here to here. So I'm probably going to want to make sure I'm filling it about, you know, maybe six inches in the bottom of the pot. So let's take soil. And then you just fill it up. Obviously, I have this garbage bag to try to protect my floor. We'll see how that goes. So how are you guys today? Are you enjoying the weather? Are you enjoying your new, newly found freedom now that they've opened up most places from quarantine? I know I am. Finally got to go to a restaurant for the first time in a long time, so that was really nice. All right, if you could pan in just a little bit. So we're gonna start maybe a couple more scoops. I filled up the bottom a good six inches and it is still kind of a loose soil. So I'm just gonna put a couple more scoops in there for good measure. You might wanna pack it down just a little bit, not a lot though, just to make sure that what we're working with here is enough in the bottom. So to test it out, I'm just gonna go ahead and place this in there to make sure. And it looks like I'm gonna to have to put just a little bit more soil in there so the plant's not too far sunk down into the container. So I'm just gonna keep filling it up just a little bit more. And this is the fun part. See, this is why I get my nails done so I can play in the dirt. <laughs> Try again. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say that's pretty good. All right, so then the next step you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna be very gentle so you don't break any of your leaves. Very gentle. Squeeze the pot. Now, if you have roots that are like wrapped around the bottom, you're gonna have to be extra gentle. You don't really want to break them up too much. You want to keep your hands as far away from those roots as possible because you want to protect those roots. And sometimes I stick my finger on the bottom to try to get a little bit of leverage. All right, and I turn it just a little. Push on it just a little to loosen up those roots. All right, let's see what we got here. Let's see, sticking my finger in. Trying to be gentle and not break any of my leaves. All right, looks pretty good. Let's check out the root ball. When we're doing this, we wanna make sure we're checking for pests. Mine's well while we're here, you know. I see a little something here. Let's see, no, nope, that's nothing. Looks really healthy. The roots look great. Looks like there's a little bit of mold. I don't see any pests though. All right, fantastic. Let's get this baby in a pot. All right. Go back over here. I don't want to 
gonna stick it back in the dirt. <laughs> Whew, okay. So this might give me a little problem because it's heavy. So I'm gonna have to hold it with one hand and fill it with soil with the other. Probably should have <laughs> grabbed a bigger scoop than this, huh? All right, so then you're just gonna go all the way around with it. Now, if you're outside, maybe you could just take the bag and start pouring it around. It's up to you, really. It's personal preference. So after you get like, I would say, a little bit more soil in here, it'll stand up on its own, but for now I'm just holding it because I don't want it to topple over and I want it to be nice and even. So I get in there it down. Try to get it secure. If you see leaves like this, pop them off. You don't need them. Any growth that looks like it's expired. Now's a good time to clean up that plant and make it look a little nicer. All right, so trying to get it secure in the pot. Go around that base. Some more soil. So while I'm doing this and filling this up with some soil, I wanted to spend a couple of minutes and talk about some of the requirements of pothos. If you want to, if you want to grow a giant like this one, the best thing you could do is put it up on a stake. Now, when you're staking it, you could use a moss pole, you could use a wooden stake, you could use, um, I've seen some people use metal rod. You know, it's completely up to you. I'd say that um, probably the best look I've had is either some kind of cedar steak or a moss pole. And you can make your own moss pole or, you know, you could buy one at the, at the store. So they're pretty easy uh, to come by. Okay, push down, trying to get this bad boy sturdy. All right, so just to recap, Recap. All right, so what I would do to get these giant sized leaves, like this big, is um, you stake it up. Staking it up, for whatever reason, makes those leaves grow giant. Okay, now, another way to make leaves go giant, grow giant, obviously, is to make sure that you have proper fertilization and a proper watering regimen that's pretty regular. Okay. Every time I water my plants, I fertilize them, including this giant. Now, as <clears throat> uh, if you're a viewer of mine and you're, you uh, watch my videos, you've heard me say this before, but if you're new here, hi, if you're new here, um, for those of you who don't know, I use a, fertiliz a fertilizer, a synthetic fertilizer called Jax. And I uh, fertilize every time that I water my plants. The package directions state one quarter teaspoon for every gallon of water. I have a two gallon watering container, so I use you know a half a teaspoon. So it's that simple, right? Make sure you're fertilized. Make it easy on you. If you overcomplicate it, sometimes when you overcomplicate stuff. You know, that doesn't work out so well. So I try to keep it simple. That's why I use Jax. That's not to say that people who use organic fertilizers like fish emulsion or moss or worm castings or anything like that, that's great. I totally support that. Being organic is awesome. It's just that I picked a fertilization system that works for me. That's it. And Jax does the trick and I've had a lot of success with it. So I stick to what works and that's what works for me. So anyway, I'm just going around the base of this pot with some soil, making sure that I'm filling it up, but I don't want the soil to be spilling out the top. I wanna to leave a lip so that way when I water it, water doesn't spill all over the floor, you know? So, but I am filling it up, at least leaving maybe a half an inch at the top. So that way making, that way it makes my watering job a lot easier. And I don't have mess to clean up. Nobody likes mess. All right, so we talked about fertilization, super important. Now let's talk about lighting. Obviously in order to grow, um, to have this grow prolifically, you wanna have it in a good lighting situation, okay? The more light you give it, the more it's gonna grow. 
Now, this plant is also known as devil's ivy, so basically, can't kill it. Well, I shouldn't say you can't. You could if you tried real hard, but it's very hard to kill this plant. You can put it in any kind of lighting situation, but the more light you give it, the more growth you're going to get from this kind of plant. Okay, this is a golden pothos. There are several different varieties of pothos, but this is the golden variety. And again, the common name is devil's ivy. Okay, so for this guy, I have this in uh, southeast facing window. I think that's southeast. Um, and it receives, you know, some sunlight, not like tons of blasting sunlight, but it does see, receive, um, I would say, a pretty adequate amount of sunlight. And it seems to be always shooting out new growth. It's very happy where it is, and it's been growing like crazy. I've propagated this plant multiple, multiple times and <laughs> have a lot of pothos because of it. So, um, yeah, it's really a really awesome plant. All right, so I'm just checking the base real quick and making sure that I've filled in all the little areas and patting it down a little bit. So there's a spot right there that I missed. So I'm gonna have to come back over in here and fill this in a little bit more. And while I'm filling it in, I'm gonna finish talking about lighting. So as I said earlier, more light equals more, more growth, yes. But if you have a home that has a lot of, you know, shaded areas and you just don't have a lot of light, this plant is super, super tolerant. You can put it in any, any lighting situation and it's going to still grow for you and it's still going to be a great plant. It's one of these plants that it's kind of like the easiest plant to take care of. So if you don't have light, don't worry about it. This plant is still going to grow, grow for you. Okay. So that concludes everything I have to say about lighting. Um, last but not least. Let's talk about pests. I don't have a lot of pest pressures with this plant at all. Um, I do regularly treat it with neem oil and the, ne the neem oil really makes the leaves shine and it doesn't hurt your plant. So pest pressures, I put it in the shower, I spray it off to make sure that you know no bugs get on it or in it. So I do that every week or two weeks depending on my schedule. Um, but generally I try to do it every time. But I haven't been, sometimes I get busy because I have a lot of plants. Anyway, neem oil is what I use to treat my plant. I'll, I'll link it in the description below so that way it'll make it easy for you to find the neem oil that you're looking for and um, purchase it if you'd like. All right, that's about it. I think that's pretty much all I have to say about pothos. Um, I would highly recommend that if you have one of these and you really want it to get big and gorgeous, huge leaves, that you stake it up, but obviously, it's also beautiful in a hanging basket as well. Another way to get a uh, giant pothos is to propagate it. I know it probably seems counterintuitive to cut your plant when you want it to be larger, but it really does work. So what I've been doing with this plant, like I said earlier in the video, I cut uh, maybe six times I've propagated this, like heavily propagated it, meaning I took maybe 15, 20 cuttings from the plant. And because of that, it is shooting out more growth, okay? So it's been probably about, I would say, a couple of weeks, maybe three, four weeks since I've propagated it. Um, and now there are several other places, again, where I could propagate it if I want to. So if you just kind of pan in here, here's an example of one of the offshoots. This is brand new growth. So are these little ones in here. So I could take any of these. Now it depends on, on what you're, you're going for because you could, if you wanted to theoretically, take this and have it continue to go down the stake to have a fuller plant. You could, you know, you could in theory do that, but I wouldn't do that because this is such a thick stemmed one that I would probably just go ahead and propagate it and make um, maybe an offshoot that would start at the bottom and go up to the top, or I would just make a whole new plant. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut it here. It's quite thick. This kind of gives you an idea of how large the, um, the stem is. It's very, very large. Okay, so when you're doing a pothos propagation, um, obviously you're going to want to find the aerial roots here, and you're going to want to find the node. Okay, so that's this guy right here. And then, you know, you're going to want to leave. OK, 
okay? So you're probably gonna wanna cut this part off to about here. I'm not gonna do that right now because I'm not yet ready to do anything with this. So for now, I'm just gonna leave this, but normally you probably cut about right here. And then this would just get discarded. Okay, so again, you have your aerial roots. This is your node. Look at all these aerial roots down here. I would probably cut here. Discard that piece. And honestly, I would just leave this together because if I'm gonna propagate this, I, I want this as one cutting for myself. And then I would probably just stick it straight in the soil. And then I would make it closer to the, to the root base so it can grow up the pole. And that's what I would do. And then I would just let that be. And this one has some aerial roots going up and down it. So you can see those guys. You see all those roots in there? Normally I would probably cut it about here. I'm not gonna do that though. I'm just gonna stick it straight in. Spot. Actually, I don't wanna do it there. I wanna find a spot that I think is kind of bare and stick it where I think it needs more growth. So, it might be a little hard because it's already root bound when I got it. So for now, I'm just gonna stick this in here and when it starts to shoot out some new growth, I'm gonna train it to go up the hole. But for now, I'm just gonna leave that there. Okay, I might actually move that one, I'm not sure yet. So let's look around, like this one right here, you could have it go back down the pole if you wanted. So it's full plant, that's easy. You just tuck it in between the leaves. The roots will find their way down. This one, I would probably just go ahead and tuck this one in somehow. Because you wanna have a full plant. You know, you don't necessarily wanna propagate all of these. But remember, cutting these little ones off is going to encourage larger growth. So I would cut this one off. There's one right here. So to encourage larger growth, I'd probably just go ahead and cut this guy off. There's this one right here. Um, yeah. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off as well. Let's go right about here. There, I have some cuttings. Now remember, I've uh, propagated this guy before, so um, I don't wanna cut too much off. I probably might do this one also. There. All right, so you can either take your cuttings Okay, doing the, the job of cutting it is going to go ahead and encourage more growth anyway, okay? But now you can take your cuttings, you can stick them in the base, train it to go up the pole, or you could propagate and make a new plant. Um, so that's a tip for, uh, you know, another tip for growing huge pothos. Um, I just continue to prune this plant and uh, make more plants. So, or I, I stick them in the soil and then just train them to go up the pole. Um, I have uh, one that I'm working on right now that I'll show you in a moment and um, some propagations that I've taken from this plant as well that I will show you. Let's go do that right now. Um, remember the stem discards that I had upstairs? I'm um, For an experiment, I'm just gonna stick them in the bottom and I'll let you know what happens later on as I uh, watch the plant. I figure the worst thing that could happen is nothing. So I'm just gonna stick it in and see if anything grows from that, okay? All right, so this is a propagation from that larger plant that I showed you earlier. Um, it's quite large. Notice how the big leaves, this is brand new. Literally cut this maybe three weeks ago, then um, propagate it in water and then put it in soil. And it's already pretty lush and full. And there are about, I would say, 10 to 15 growth points. So that's great. This is another one I've worked on. As you can see, I made my own pole. I used twine and I used a, a cedar stake. And um, I haven't really been paying much attention to this, but I can see that 
you know, it has grown a little bit and I could, um, you know, train it to go up the pole by tying some twine around, you know, the new growth points that have happened. Um, now, because this plant is not as mature as the one upstairs, I would probably take those cuttings that I just cut off of that big plant and stick them in here right next to the base in hopes of training them to go up the pole as well. So these are my two uh, projects that I'm working on here. And again, you know, you have to pay attention to it and you have to, you know, get out the twine and try to train it to go grow up the pole. Okay. And so you, it is something like if you're um, considering staking up a pothos, you kind of got to, you kind of have to keep your eye on. Okay. This is another pothos that I've got my eye on. Yeah, I could stake this up and do the same kind of project, but I really like this as a hanging basket. To encourage huge pothos, lots of bushiness, and even more legs, you'd propagate, you know, you'd, you'd propagate the bottom of these, and then also, um, you know, it, you will have adventitious growth. So it might not grow right from the spot that you cut it, but it will shoot out at other points. So if you have stuff like this, get rid of it. It's always good to check your plants. And this is normal, honestly, this is normal. You know, as your plant kicks out new growth, sometimes it also gets rid of the, uh, the weak, the weak links. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, so again, fertilize, light, uh, prune your plant and propagate it to encourage uh, large growth and big booms of growth. Um, and give it lots of love. Believe it or not, plants love love. <laughs> they are um, play play music for your plants. You might think that sounds crazy, but um, positive energy does encourage plant growth. I don't know what the connection is, but it's a real thing. So, you know, enjoy your plants. They'll grow faster for you. That's my chip. <laughs> All right. Go out there and get yourself a pothos today. Put it up on a stake. You won't regret it. It will grow uh, very large leaves like this one right here. And you will absolutely be in love with it. It's a show-stopping piece. Um, yeah, this plant, I've received a lot of compliments on this plant from people that come into my home. So I highly recommend it. And I hope you will not get, get one today. Oh, I got this one at a local Lowe's, by the way. So sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll be able to pick up one of these at your local hardware store. Um, you just have to kind of, I don't know, check for the time of year. I think I got this probably in, in the springtime when, when I bought it. Um, yeah, so, you know, just keep checking your hardware stores. You'll get good, good deals there. Um, I think I paid $30 or $40 for this plant. So it's a very good deal. If you were to order a plant like this online, as you know, it would be an incredible amount of money. And that's, there's no point in doing that. Try to save money. Go to your local hardware store. Okay. Well, um, thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Creaky. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and ask me in the description or in the comment section below. I am here for you every Monday and Thursday. Please come back and see me again real soon. And you guys take care and you have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe. Please subscribe. All right. Bye.